If you're looking for mitzvahs, you've come to the right place. This week's reading of Ki Titze holds the Guinness record for the most mitzvahs or commandments of any of the weekly parshas, over 70. These mitzvahs cover everything under the sun, that hot desert sun, that is, where the Israelites are waiting to enter the promised land. There are mitzvahs about everything from family values to how to fight wars, how to grow crops, to which clothes you should wear. Some are ethical about how we treat people, and others are more ritual about how to serve God. Then there's a mitzvah called Tsar Balei Chaim, about preventing the suffering of animals, which doesn't seem to fall neatly into either of those traditional categories. We're not talking about cats and dogs here. There aren't too many pets in the Bible. The animals they had worked for a living. And so there's a rule that Sabbath rest goes for your animals as much as for you. Regulations about how to treat animals are like labor laws, protecting the conditions of the workers who here happen to have four legs. Is that donkey struggling under a heavy load? Go help it. You're even obligated to do this for your enemy's animals. Earlier in the Torah, we were commanded not to cut down fruit trees in wartime. Here, too, we are told to keep our arguments between people and not drag in nature and other creatures. Here's another mitzvah from Kitetze. When you plow a field, don't do it with a big ox and a small donkey, because the weaker one will suffer. And when it comes time to thresh the harvest, don't muzzle that ox to prevent it from eating while you're making it stare at all that juicy grain. Some of these laws may seem old-fashioned. When was the last time you plowed a field at all? Not to mention using an ox or a donkey. And who knows what threshing is anymore, anyway? Actually, it's the process where we separate the edible parts of the grain from the gross, inedible parts. But the question of how we treat animals today is even more crucial. The Torah allows us to use animals for our own benefit, but draws the line at abuse. So where do we draw that line today, in our lives, in our homes, in the fields, and in science? This brings us to the last mitzvah of the day, the curious example of what to do when you find a nest with birds and chicks or eggs and you need them for food. If you happen to find a bird's nest and the mother bird is sitting over the chicks or on top of the eggs, the Torah tells you to shoo away the mother bird, let her go, and only take the chicks or the eggs. And if you do, the Torah continues, you'll fare well and have a long life. But why should we send the mother bird away? And why is this supposed to bring us long life? Maybe this is just another example of preventing cruelty to animals. But if that's true, wouldn't the Torah have just forbidden taking the chicks or the eggs? How will the mother bird feel when she comes back and finds her babies gone? Maybe then it's really about us, encouraging people to be more compassionate. Or maybe there's a third way to understand it. The mother bird makes the chicks and the eggs, with some help from dad, and so if you need to, take some, but let her go on living and making more. This is actually one of the greenest mitzvahs in the Torah, because to kill both the mother and the child would be like picking ripe fruit and then chopping down the fruit tree. And we do this more often than we think when we overfish the oceans, say, or when we take too much of anything or use it up more quickly than the earth can replace. This is why this mitzvah is the key to living good and long lives. It's about helping the natural world renew and replenish itself without us getting in the way. Abraham Lincoln once said, I care not for a man's religion whose dog and cat are not the better for it. According to the Torah, that means all animals and the whole natural world. That's why we call it a tree of life, life for us and for all of creation.